Hey everybody, this is John Tennant coming to you with my fourth video exploring synesthesia and the cool things that can be done with it in UE4. My previous videos, my previous three videos, focused mainly on visual effects and how to manipulate visual effects with audio. And what I really was excited to do and am still excited to explore uh, is how to actually manipulate animation with audio. So I thought of this idea of using birds, sparrows in this case, and, uh, and using the flapping sound to drive the animation of the wings for the sparrow. And so you're seeing this in action right now. I'll just let you watch and listen without the sound of my voice for a minute. Less than a minute. Yeah, so that's probably good enough. You, as you can see, it works pretty well. It's got its issues, but it's also got some pretty cool stuff going on. So I'll walk you through how I did it, and maybe some of you will take some inspiration and try this yourselves. So the first thing I did was to set up a blueprint with a mesh, skeletal mesh, and, uh, and just give them a path to follow. Um, so I used a spline. It's got my sounds attached there and stuff, nothing sort of untoward about that. But what I really needed to do was figure out how I was going to animate. And so I ended up using blend spaces because they're so easy to drive with an external variable. But instead of using blend space between complex animations, uh, instead it's just a blend space between static poses. And so as the value for wing flap loudness goes up and down, we get this sort of flapping motion. This is what ended up working pretty good, but it took a fair amount of experimentation to come up with that. I do wonder if there's a way to actually just do it inside of a, an animation where, I, where the value that I feed it from the blueprint would scrub the timeline pretty sure there's a way to do it like that, but I couldn't figure it out uh, for this demo and the blend space idea seemed to work just fine. So there are three main branches of logic in this blueprint and they all kind of center around these three timers here. And the timers um, alpha values are what move the bird around in a circle and also let the bird go up and down, that's the gravity sim. And then they're also what create the tiny little swerves of the bird, kind of swerving back and forth, uh, like, uh, like he's grabbing a, a bite of a mosquito or a fly or something. I'll just show you what that looks like again, so you can understand. You can see every once in a while, there's a little swerve. So yeah, the three timers are controlling. One's controlling the progress around the spline, around the circle. One is controlling whether the bird's going up or down. And one is controlling the little miniature swerves in and around. And what that looks like in the blueprint is like this. Okay. So it's all being driven from the audio, like I, I mentioned before. And so the very first thing that happens on the event begin play is, uh, is the audio is started. And now, once the audio is started, just the same as I've done it in previous videos, I'm reading the, I'm reading the playback percentage and, uh, and using that to get normalized value over, ta over time from the NRT files. And this, this sh should be pretty familiar to anyone who's seen my other videos. Um, also, this is same as what I was doing in the last video, using the, uh, the table to uh, associate the wave to the NRT file. Because the bird flapping is random, of course. Okay, so, when the bird goes up, flapping up, it's only when the wing flapping sound is playing, 
it sends this one event to bird is rising, which is right here. And that is controlling the playback of the gravity. So when we're flying up, we want to reverse this timer, which is controlling the way that we fall up or down. And what that looks like inside is it's just zero to one over the span of three seconds. So if there is no wing flapping within three seconds, the bird will fall all the way down to its bottom height. And if there's three seconds of constant wing flapping, it'll go all the way to its top height. And it just kind of travels along this, this line here. And the reason there's so many points is it turns out it looks a little bit better if the line isn't so perfect. If, so it's just a little bit of noise in the, in the flight pattern. So I'll show you that. You can kind of see how it doesn't really go up or down smoothly. Kind of dips around and stuff like a, hopefully like more like a real bird. So it's similar stuff, just controlling the, the swerve pattern. The swerve kind of looks like this just to give it way less of a predictive feel. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about how how I arrived at all this math, but it was just it was just a lot of trial and error to be honest. So we're getting the loudness from the NRT file and doing a bit of math on it to make it a more friendly value for how I'm using it and uh, and setting wing flap loudness here. And if we go back to the animation blueprint, you can see the way I'm, I'm setting wing flap intensity with wing flap loudness from the, uh, from this blueprint here. So wing flap intensity is of course what's driving the blend space. And the blend space, when we go from zero to one, is what's causing the wing flapping. So that's kind of the heart of what I think is cool about this demo. The rest of it, it I mean, it's, it looks really complex and everything, but it's pretty standard um, blueprint scripting. I just went to a lot of trouble to making the bird look lifelike, like with this stuff, because I wanted to prove out the, the concept of just this one thing of using the blend space to drive the animation from a value being read from an NRT file. Another cool way to look at this is I can disable flight on both these poor guys. And while it is a cool thing to do, it does give us a chance to really look at this. And there you have it. Flightless birds, sort of. So uh, thanks for watching. If you want, you can subscribe and you'll know about the next video I do. I'm definitely going to keep going down on this path of exploration of synesthesia and how to use it different ways. I'm really excited about it. And I hope you are too. So until next time, stay safe, wear a mask.